Hi, I'm Susie Kraybacher. I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself and about the organization called Haiti Children that my husband and I founded 25 years ago. We've worked in Haiti exclusively, mostly with abandoned children and orphaned children. But a lot of people ask me, why Haiti and why did you choose to do this particular work? I live in Aspen, Colorado, and I chose this work because of my own experience when I was a child. It's amazing how our childhood stories develop us and our lives and I think it's very interesting um, that oftentimes those things that happen that are the worst and that you think that you absolutely cannot survive turn the whole thing around. Not just for ourselves sometimes but maybe and it could be even for a country. So in my case when I was very little um, my grandfather was a pedophile and my brother and I were sexually abused for many years. So I was disturbed as a child and um, wound up in foster care in Alabama. Back in um, those years, I felt very abandoned and very, um, um, I was, I was hurt that my family didn't protect me, but I also understand that they may not have had the ability or the equip, they weren't equipped to protect me. But somewhere in my mind when I was going through those years and in foster care, I had this constant, constant um, strength that didn't come, it was not an innate strength. I really felt that there was something bigger than me. I felt that I was really a protector, even though I needed a protector. And I just thought, someday, this is not going to be the thing that kills me. It's going to be the thing that I can take care of other people. And I knew that my brother um, needed my help and for me to be strong for him. And it just gave me the sense that you can't dwell on the things that are happening. Look forward. Look forward. What are you going to do? How are you going to get to the next step? How are you going to take care of your brother? My, my brother was five years younger than me. I had no intention of failing anybody that I needed to protect. So that kind of formed um, the Susie that I became. I felt my natural role was as a protector. When I turned 15, um, I realized that there wasn't probably going to be anybody that would rescue me. I quit high school. I got a job. I supported myself and had intended to su support my little brother and take care of him. And events changed. Some of you know my history. Um, some of you don't. I became a model and I... Um, I never looked back on school. Uh, I felt like, you know, I didn't have time for it. I had to support myself and, you know, potentially others. And I just went on with my life. And I don't recommend that for everybody. Um, it happened to be the path that I needed to take. And there was a great need to take care of myself because nobody else was going to do it. So I, I had a, a memory during those um, years of being a somewhat successful model, being able to pay my own bills and um, have my own apartment and move my little brother in with me, I remembered, you know, I felt that I was born to be a protector. How am I going to do that? So I thought someday if I'm ever able to not have to work, not have to bring uh, in the salary, um, maybe maybe I could do something to help other kids because I felt terrible. When I was eight years old, I remember thinking, God, I just wish I could die. I, I just feel like I've lost all hope and zero control. And that went on till I was 15. Um, and when I remembered thinking those thoughts, I thought, I can't imagine being alone at that young age and not having anybody to tuck me in bed, tell me how things are, talk to me about boys, um, you know, help me through the little decisions in life. So I thought, 
I know, I know, I know that I know that someday I am going to be able to do something that will take care of little girls like me. And my vision was to take care of little girls like me. When I was 29, um, I had married my husband and he came home after four years of marriage and said, you know, I think I can handle all of the bills. I don't think that you have to work anymore. I want you to do what you want to do. And I thought immediately, I know what I want to do. I want to help children. Um, someone had told me about Haiti. I went to Haiti and the first night that I was there, I got lost in a slum. My cab driver had left because it had gotten dark and I ended up first night Susie Graybacher in high heels, in a slum, didn't speak the language, uh, had nothing but a fanny pack, few dollars, cab driver had left. I spent the night with the poorest of the poor. And I saw so many children with swollen bellies, with um, just in the most dire straits of despair. And I remembered how I felt. I called back to my husband. I said, you know, um, I'm going to have to stay here. Um, I, I really think that I found where I want to work. And it did turn out to be Haiti. And I have grown this institution into taking care of about 5,200 people every day in Haiti from that one moment in my life that I knew that I knew that I knew. And it, there is usually a moment like that. I knew that I could take care of kids, not because I had money, not because I had any experience, but because I had been there, I had felt those feelings, and if nothing else, I knew how to fight to protect. So my ability did not come from uh, being a genius or being highly educated. I knew how to fight for what was right, and I knew how it felt to be the one who needed what I am now able to give. So I'm hoping that you'll join me um, on this vlog adventure. Uh, this is my first one, and I have so much to tell you. I have so much to tell you, and I think that a lot of us are looking for that moment. A lot of us are looking for what is it that we can do that will finally um, make us feel that we have purpose, we have so much ability, and everybody's got a different one. So please join me, and if you get a chance, go to my website, HaitiChildren.org, and let's continue this together. I think it'll be very, very impactful on your life.